Item number SCP-1795 Object Class Safe Special Containment Procedures All known instances of SCP-1795 inhabit extremely remote locales in interstellar space and are composed of dimensions that exceed that of the Earth. Therefore, containment of all SCP-1795 entities is impossible at present. Movements of all known cases of SCP-1795 should be tracked and their creation cycles monitored for any new developments. Foundation personnel within NASA, ESA, and Deep Space Observatories have confirmed that there are no known cases of SCP-1795 within at least 20 light-years of Earth, with analysis of space to the depth of 30 light-years currently ongoing. Any close scientific examination, such as examination with the intent to locate exoplanets, into any stars listed in document B-1795, from any body other than the Foundation, is to be suppressed immediately, as the stars listed all harbor a case of SCP-1795 in varying stages of creation. Any public or government examination of young protostars not yet cleared by the Foundation is to be closely monitored for any data revealing cases of SCP-1795 in the universe. Should such a case occur, Class A amnestics will be administered to all individuals involved, with all recorded data to be seized by the Foundation for analysis and expunged from the public record. It has been discovered that the population density of SCP-1795 varies throughout the galaxy. The region surrounding Earth is sparsely populated, with as little as one in one million stars harboring a case of SCP-1795 in the local 1,000 light-years. In areas of high star formation, such as globular clusters and nebulae, Foundation density can be as high as 1 in 1,000. Estimates for the total population of SCP-1795 in our galaxy range from between 1 billion cases to a population in excess of 50 billion. Description. Due to their great distance from Earth, direct observation is impossible with current telescope technology. However, Usage of SCP has permitted remote viewing to a relatively detailed degree, and the harnessing of the latent temporal effects of SCP has allowed the preliminary observation of instances of SCP-1795 over the course of the past 15 million years. Cases of SCP-1795 are spheroidal entities, somewhat similar in appearance to that of the human heart, with three large nodular openings circling the upper end and a hollow interior. Although they outwardly appear to be composed of some form of biological matter, detailed examination has revealed that their bodies do not correlate to any known form of biological matter and are likely at least partially synthetic in construction. Instances of SCP-1795 are the largest life forms known to the Foundation, often in excess of 50,000 kilometers in diameter. It is unknown whether cases of SCP-1795 are sapient, although they are capable of highly complex tasks outlined below. It is unknown whether they are aware of, control, or self-regulate these actions, or if they operate a little more than animalistic instinct. They are not observed to utilize any form of technology, and move at speeds barely in excess of what can be achieved with modern rocket technology. Therefore, traversing interstellar space must necessarily take millions, if not billions of years for them, depending on their target destination. Assuming they are not immortal, then their lifespan must be on similar terms. It is worth noting that throughout the Foundation's year-long study of cases of SCP-1795, no case has ever been observed to expire or be otherwise destroyed, nor has any case been observed to reproduce self-replicate, or come into contact with another SCP-1795. Cases of SCP-1795 exhibit two key anomalous properties that are essential to their only known form of natural behavior. The first anomalous property is that cases of SCP-1795 will always seek out young protostars and attempt to move into their orbit. However, Due to the fact that it takes all instances of SCP-1795 billions of years to traverse interstellar space, the SCP-1795 must have started moving in the direction of the star 
millions of years before it even existed. One explanation for the seven dormant, i.e., currently not mobile cases of SCP-1795 is that they are simply waiting for their target star to form. The second property is far more readily observable, and understood to a far greater degree. Upon arrival at a young protostar, the SCP-1795 will move into a stable orbit in the star's habitable or Goldilocks zone where temperatures are suitable for life as it is understood on Earth. It will then proceed to create a planet. The methods by which cases of SCP-1795 create planets are not fully understood, but fall into a clearly defined pattern of eight stages which are outlined below. All created planets are observed to be rocky, similar in size to that of the Earth, possess a breathable atmosphere, magnetically active core, fully formed moon, and are always extremely conducive to life. SCP has been used extensively to locate and study such phenomena, and with the inventory of known cases of SCP-1795 approaching over 500 million instances known to the Foundation, all aspects of the creation cycle have been witnessed and studied to a great degree. Document A-1795 SCP-1975 Planetary Creation Cycle Stage 1 The nodular openings around SCP-1795's upper end dilate and draw in stellar material, such as gaseous matter and rocky debris. All material is observed to converge into a rough orb in the center of the SCP-1795, with all rocky debris gradually compacting into a solid sphere with all gaseous matter held under its gravity similar to natural planetary formation. When the protoplanet can hold the atmosphere under its own gravity, the openings close and the next stage begins. Stage 2 Certain areas of SCP-1795 exterior will begin radiating enormous amounts of heat. It is theorized that gases in the SCP-1795's interior, such as carbon dioxide and nitrogen dioxide, are being converted into oxygen and nitrogen in these regions. The protoplanet will begin showing signs of magma eruptions as the oxygen content within the SCP-1795 rises. It is unknown what criteria must be met for the next stage to begin. Stage 3 SCP-1795 will extrude a web-like substance from its interior, which will fasten at multiple points on the planet's surface. The full extent of this effect is unknown, but the planet will become magnetically active during this time. When the magnetic field is sufficient to protect the planet from the solar wind, the next stage will begin. Stage 4 SCP-1795 will contract closely around the planet, making observation of the next stage difficult. However, it has been established that this is when the SCP-1795 will deposit water onto the planet. Slit-like openings will open around the equator of SCP-1795 and release white gas of a currently unknown substance. The gas will proceed to envelop the exterior of SCP-1795 and will trail behind it in its orbit, making direct observation impossible until the stage ends. At this point, the slits will close and the planet will have a fully formed ocean including defined landmasses. Stage 5 SCP-1795 will deploy rough orbs of unknown material 2 km in diameter which will then proceed to impact the planet's surface, causing widespread devastation of the surrounding land. Earlier research teams assumed that the SCP-1795 in question was merely attempting to reshape the land, but later research has revealed that the orbs are largely intact after impact and release swarms of variously shaped constructs. Very little is currently known or understood about these entities due to limitations in SCP magnification. However, these entities, henceforth referred to as SCP-1795-2, are known to be spider-like and roughly 20 meters in length. They are not believed to be true lifeforms, since it appears that these constructs are wholly slave to the sapience of the SCP-1795. For once Stage 7 is complete, they will all simultaneously destroy themselves. It is unknown what begins the next stage, although a population of SCP-1795-2 that exceeds 5 billion have been theorized by some Foundation researchers. Stage 6 
the entity spawned by SCP-1795 will begin the work towards a commonly understood terraforming plan. In the case of SCP-1795-E, the behavior observed was often paradoxical and included vast amounts of activity, including, among other activities, digging mountains in the rubble, the construction of artificial islands, making three oceans artificially deeper, and the total destruction of the planet's smallest continent by artificially detonating a supervolcano, apparently displaying little concern as to the enormous casualties this inflicted upon the population. When the various tasks are finished, all cases of SCP-1795-2 will simultaneously converge upon several points upon the planet's landmasses, and the next stage will begin. Stage 7 The penultimate stage has been studied to the greatest extent. Once all cases of SCP-1795-2 have converged upon the clearly defined geographic locations, they will proceed to construct artificial megastructures out of locally sourced resources. The megastructures built vary in size and shape depending on resource availability and the location chosen, but fall into three distinct categories. City On mainly coastal areas, the cases of SCP-1795-2 will proceed to create artificial habitation structures which bear strong similarities to Earth cities, being composed of cuboid towers surrounded by a structured road system and open areas. The building constructed appear to be tailored for beings of human dimensions. Pad. On inland areas, cases of SCP-1795-2 will create wide rectangular flattened pads out of a stone-like substance. Pads are usually three kilometers along each side and are connected to the nearest city by a road. They are possibly intended for the landing of spacecraft. Pylon On island areas, cases of SCP-1795-2 will create a tower-like structure between 1 to 2 kilometers high with a wide base, topped by an abstract humanoid form holding a 100-meter wide transparent sphere and outstretched arms. Their purpose is unknown. Despite careful observation of the megastructures, to the Foundation's knowledge, no beings have ever arrived to inhabit or operate any constructs built by cases of SCP-1795-2. Despite the presence of areas clearly intended to be parks or farms in close proximity to the cities, no plant life has currently developed on planets created by SCP-1795. It has been theorized that the inhabitants intend to seed the ecosystem themselves if or when they arrive. The arrival of the inhabitants is, however, doubted by the Foundation, as evidenced by the fact that after the SCP-1795 leaves, the structures will gradually fall into disrepair and ruin. When the structures are completed, all cases of SCP-1795-2 will commit suicide by decapitating themselves. This begins Stage 8. Stage 8. SCP-1795 will now depart the world. A wide opening will appear at the bottom of SCP-1795's body, and the SCP-1795 will deploy the planet in its orbit by moving directly away from it. It will immediately begin to seek out another protostar. Despite the fact that all planets created by SCP-1795 are extremely conducive to life and harbor megastructures clearly intended for the inhabitation of, or to be operated by, intelligent beings, See document A-1795 for further information. No life has ever arisen on planets known to be constructed by cases of SCP-1795, and no beings have ever been observed to inhabit or operate the structures left behind by the SCP-1795. Their eventual arrival is doubted by the Foundation, since as demonstrated by the case of SCP-1795-, the structures will gradually fall into disrepair and ruin throughout the decades following the departure of the SCP-1795 responsible for the world. The act of SCP-1795 completing a world was witnessed on the date of March 22, SCP-1795- was observed to stretch a wide circular opening at the upper end of its body and deploy the world in its orbit by moving directly away from it. SCP-1795-** immediately began moving towards a point in the region of Propulsion appears to be achieved by voiding gas inside their hollow interiors, 
leading cases of SCP-1795 to gradually become more elongated over the course of their travels as they slowly deflate. It is unknown as to why cases of SCP-1795 create these planets, or to what purpose it serves. It is unclear whether they are following a shared plan or design, or if cases of SCP-1795 are operating independently. Addendum I-1795 From Dr. L. Richter to O5 Sir, I must once again request permission to use SCP for the purpose of engaging in contact with SCP-1795-M-129. Throughout my studies of the 13 cases of SCP-1795, I find it inconceivable that these beings are incapable of contact with each other. If they were not, how else would two such beings avoid traveling to the same star, or avoid returning to systems already visited by a case of SCP-1795? And if they are capable of communicating with each other, surely we could do the same? I am convinced that a small amount of modification to SCP would enable it to transmit as well as simply receive signals, making it ideal for virtually instantaneous two-way communication with any case of SCP-1795 regardless of distance from Earth. Therefore, I humbly submit a request for SCP Modification Clearance, outlined in the attached document U-1795. The knowledge we can gain from these creatures is likely groundbreaking and at the very least grant a clearer insight to the behavior of these creatures. Again, I thank you for your patience and urge you to grant document U-1795 full and just consideration. Regards, Dr. L. Richter from O5 2. Dr. L. Richter Permission denied. No attempts are to be made to modify SCP or engage in contact with any case of SCP-1795 until they are better understood. Regards, O5 From Dr. L. Richter 2. O5 Sir, with all due respect, I really do not think you fully understand the implications of the behavior of SCP-1795. They are machines, this much I am certain of. Biomechanical constructs, yes, but machines nevertheless. Machines imply a designer, and a designer by extension implies that his machines have a purpose. The purpose of cases of SCP-1795 are clear, to build worlds entirely suited to the biology of their creators and to prepare them for their arrival, a directive they have followed for over a hundred million years. But it's out of control. Throughout our studies of these worlds, no one has arrived to inhabit them. None of these masters arrived to inherit these worlds. Could it be that these masters are dead, lost, or scattered, and that these machines are all that remain, mindlessly creating world at the world? But consider one final thing. These worlds that are created are positively Earth-like. In fact, they are perfect for human habitation. All structures on these worlds are designed for beings of human size and shape. In fact, I would go so far as to say that these worlds are designed for us. They are built for us. Please consider, sir, that surely a civilization great enough to create beings such as SCP-1795 could never be totally destroyed, but there must be some survivors scattered across the more remote areas of this galaxy. The implications of this are many, but I for one begin to suspect that the cases of SCP-1795 are very likely to obey human orders. I have resubmitted document U-1795 for your consideration. Regards, Dr. L. Richter Addendum J-1795 The following audio message was received after Dr. L. Richter established preliminary contact with SCP-1795-M-129 via SCP. The voice received was comparable to that of a young female. Language was virtually identical to ancient dialect. Translation follows. Message begins. June 12, 1324. Oh, my masters. Long for so long. The war. The terrible, awful genocide of the pattern screamer. We extinct. We didn't know. We could only flee. Build for the survivors, but we feared our work was possibly in vain, futile.
but we never dared to hope that some would remain in part of galaxy. Are you satisfied with our work? It took long, and we feared it would last forever. Our empire outshone the and now it will do so again. My masters, oh my masters, we are coming home. Message ends.